Welcome back to the Jean Piget series of videos presented by Washington County Community College. In this part four, we will be taking a closer look at the pre-operational stage of Piget's cognitive development theory. The pre-operational stage lasts from two to seven years of age. Pre-operational thought is the ability to reconstruct in thought what has been established in behavior. In this stage, children begin to represent the world with words, images, and drawings. Mental reasoning emerges, egocentrism is present, and magical beliefs are constructed. It can be divided into two substages, the symbolic function substage and the intuitive thought substage. Let's take a closer look at each of these substages. The symbolic function substage occurs between two and four years. Young children begin to gain the ability to mentally represent an object that is not present. You can see this in children's drawings where they represent people, houses, cars, animals, clouds, and so on. Children begin to use language and engage in pretend play. If you were to listen to a conversation between two preschoolers, you may notice that it sounds less like a conversation and more like two separate monologues. Children typically talk past one another rather than to one another. This is because a characteristic of preoperational intelligence in children is egocentrism. Egocentrism is the inability to distinguish between one's own perspective and someone else's. Piget and his co-worker Barbel and Helder devised a three mountain model and task to study children's egocentrism. A child walks around the mountains and becomes familiar with the look of the mountains from all perspectives. The child is then seated on one side of the model while a doll is on the other side of the model. The child is asked to select from a series of photos which photo best represents the view of the mountains the doll has. Children in the pre-operational stage often pick the photo with their own view rather than the doll's view. Pre-operational children also believe that inanimate objects have lifelike qualities and are capable of action. This is known as animism. An example of animism is a child who accidentally swings a doll into her own face. She then becomes mad at the doll as she believes the doll has hit her on purpose. Intuitive thought is the second substage of pre-operational thought. It occurs between four and seven years of age. In this stage, children begin to use primitive reasoning and want to know the answer to all sorts of questions. This is when children begin to ask why. Why does the sand get wet? Why does the ocean sound angry? Why does the island float on the water? Why is this pumpkin so big? Why can't I bend backwards as far as I can bend forwards? Why are you upside down? The child's questions signal the emergence of interest in reasoning and figuring out why things are the way they are. PJ called this substage intuitive because young children seem so sure about their knowledge and understanding, yet are unaware of how they know what they know. They know something without the use of rational thinking. One limitation of pre-operational thought is centration. Centration is the centering of attention on one characteristic to the exclusion of all others. Centration is most clearly evidenced in young children's lack of conservation. Conservation is the awareness that altering an object's or a subject's appearance does not change its basic properties. For example, to adults it is obvious that a certain amount of liquid stays the same regardless of a container's shape. This is not at all obvious to young children. Instead, they are struck by the height of the liquid in the container. They focus on the characteristic of height to the exclusion of all other characteristics. Piget developed conservation tasks to study children's development of conservation during the pre-operational stage. These tasks included number, liquid, length, mass, area, weight, and volume tasks. In the following example, you will see Linda perform one of Piget's liquid conservation tasks with Natalia. Natalia is an intelligent and curious four-year-old who you can clearly see is taking Linda's questions seriously. I'm going to pour some juice into the cups. And I'm going to pour some into the first cup. Oops, I'll probably spill it. I don't have any napkins. Okay. And then I'm going to pour juice into the second cup. And will you tell me when to stop when they have the same? Okay. Okay. All right. Tell me to stop when they have the same. Stop. Okay. Do you think they have the same? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now I have another cup. And I'm going to take one of these and pour. 
pour it into this cup. Now, are they still the same? Which one has more? That one. Why does that have more? Because you poured one cup inside. I, I poured it out of this cup into that one. Okay, thank you. As you can see from our example, Natalia was able to observe and identify that the amount of liquid in the first two glasses were equal. Later, when Linda poured out one glass of juice into a taller glass, Natalia was able to see that the height of the glass had changed and concentrated on this characteristic. She identified the taller glass as having more juice than the shorter glass. Conservation does not happen all at once. Children begin to develop it a bit at a time. That is why children will demonstrate understanding of conservation in some examples but remain centrated on others. This video has taken a look at PJ's pre-operational stage and its two sub-stages. In the next video we will explore the concrete operational stage in PJ's cognitive development theory.